common, uh, a common link here. Um, of course, uh, Morton is a common link, but I think that this philosophy of, of sharing and debating on, on things that probably are taken for granted as truth, which is not really the case. Uh, for me, it's very interesting to, to take part in the discussion because as, as, as you know, uh, many of us know each other from, from a long time in different, different workshops and different conferences and so on. And when I was reading the, this, the drafts for this book, I, I saw different chapters and so on. I was feeling that, um, well, on, on the one hand, you must see, I, I, was the, the, I, I was a student of Morten in my graduate studies. And, and he was a supervisor on, on my PhD. Um, and after that, he has been... Um, co-author, a mentor, a good friend. So many of these ideas have been imprinted in me without me knowing it, you know. Uh, and when I was reading these par parts of the book, I very much felt that, well, he, this is put explicitly out in words, things that I take for granted. So, so I think that I, it has also, uh, looking at how this book developed and now reading the, the final part is, is, is uh, making me reflect a lot on the things that I see because as both Silke and Sibel is raising is that sometimes you feel a mismatch between the thing how you think and the and the system you are in you see that this is creates some kind of friction and and for me the core of the book is um, as I experience it is, is, is the questions like why do we make research and why do we publish? You know, things like that. It goes back to what more to cause the heart <laughs> here, you know, it's about what, what drives us. Uh, and it's part of a bigger picture because making research and publishing is just a, a one part of being a scholar. It's, it's, it's not a, a, a more important or less important part, but it's one part of being a scholar. It's also community service, engaging uh, with society, teaching, and, and a lot of the research we do is not ending up in public publications because it's, it's important anyway uh, for, for, for di different things. And for, I remember Morton told me, well, well maybe he di didn't told me explicitly to me, but he was talking about in the beginning when I was around him, uh, very junior, he, he was talking about we need to start publish and engage in the international scholarly conversations about things. So for me, it was very natural to start writing and publishing. Very early on, I started publishing, not because there was some kind of list or ranking or something like that, but that was the kind of the things that, that he encouraged me and other junior scholars to do in order to get out. And I have been later on, I've, I've been finding out that that is a kind of a, that's how I see publications. It's uh, as Anne Huff is calling is engaging in conversations. It's a way of, of uh, telling your story and telling the story to others and co-creating stories with others and, and knowing what to, to sub, what community, sub community to engage with in this conversation and so on. So it's, it's, it's a kind of a, apart from all other things that makes it meaningful for me of being a scholar, writing and writing for scholarly publication is one thing that makes it meaningful. And, and that brings up the, this idea about the, the more systemic view on scholarship. I mean, it's, it's not about, it's not only about doing research and it's not only about publishing, but, but it's it included in this broader system of, well, the broader academic system. And when we talk about equilibrium and balance, for me, I mean, I, I of course, we are, we are also biased when it comes to our disciplines. And I, I do a lot of entrepreneurship research and, and we don't think so much about equilibrium, but disequilibrium, I mean, break, breaking order. And for me, it's about, I mean, when I think about this is that publishing for me is a means rather than an end. It's, it's a way for me to 
sometimes learn about new fields is a good way of, of, of I have to put down things in text and communicate things. I become sharper in mind when I teach, when I engage in, in, in discussions with other scholars, with my students, in policy discussions, in consulting, etc. It's a means of, of, of you know, sharpening things and developing things. But what concerns me and what I think is very important, uh, an important critique in the book is that it has become an end in itself. I mean, when you, if you publish, you're done. For me, it's a start. <laughs> it's a way of, of, you know, doing a lot of things. I can use my writing, my engaging in scholarly conversation by publishing, of doing a lot of things. But when it becomes an end in itself, that's where I feel that it, something is... is wrong or rotten if you if you want to refer to hamlet um so so for me it puts a finger on a lot of things but but i also think i mean i think it was silke that that says that i mean we are i mean it's also about actors and we are the actors and many of us have positions and influence in different ways i mean i can understand that junior scholars are feeling the the pressure, but what about the others that, I mean, we have to also not only see this, but, but try to influence this and talk about this in different, how, what kind of system do we want to have? And in that respect, I, I, I find it very refreshing and insightful to, to put text and words on this in the book, to, to try to envision a future that we want to have. So, so this is kind of my reflections on this, uh, that it's, uh, that it's making things explicit about the problems that I experience around me.